the single most important reason why we have revised the forecast and, and now we see indeed a, a recession for the region as a whole is the oil price decline. Oil prices have more than halved and, and uh, is still going down, um, affecting primarily Russia as the major commodity exporter in the region, but other commodity exporters. And they are important because not only that uh, they are, uh, their economic share, GDP is very high, but also because they uh, are an important source of external demand for many of the countries, uh, countries which are linked to Russia and a very important source of remittances, which, um, which is a major source of consumption for many smaller economies linked to Russia. It is because um, uh, we have two group of countries um, in our region, commodity exporters, Russia, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, uh, and some smaller ones, and commodity importers. But the weight of the former commodity exporters is much bigger in our region than anywhere else in, in the global world. Um, they make up 45% of the region's GDP, and in terms of external demand, uh, what they pose for the smaller countries, their share is even bigger. Indeed, we have a group of countries where we have revised the forecast uh, quite significantly relative to our most recent ones. The ones which, on the one hand, benefit from the oil price decline, uh, the likes of, uh, of Georgia, even Ukraine, Moldova, the smaller countries, uh, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, but at the same time, they are hit by the uh, lower external demand that uh, comes uh, from Russia's uh, deep recession that we see for this year. Um, as well as um, 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 a huge decline in remittances, uh, a major source of uh, consumption for, for these countries, um, and FDI and other financial linkages. Ukraine is continuing to go through uh, a necessary, if extremely painful, adjustment process. Uh, the IMF program uh, is in place, uh, but being revised to take into account the fact uh, of the ruptures of economic relations with regards to the eastern uh, region of the country, uh, which is a major source of exports, a major source of uh, other output, and uh, a major um, um, element of the global value chains um, that, that uh, Ukraine has had. With them virtually being cut off, and with the financial system being virtually cut off uh, from the rest of Ukraine, Ukraine is suffering a, a deep recession actually a little bit better than we had feared, um, given the, some terms of trade gains, um, but still very deep. Uh, Central and, 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 and uh, South Eastern Europe, and particularly Central Europe, is benefiting uh, with, from strong domestic demand. These economies uh, have um, uh, managed to increase investment in part thanks to the much better use of, uh, of uh, EU structural funds, in part uh, some pickup in also in private investment and a boost in consumption. The latter came in some countries like Hungary also from administrative measures to cut uh, utility prices. But overall, we see um, domestic demand replacing actually exports as a main engine, engine of uh, growth, as the European uh, growth uh, outlook remains very uh, weak. I would say yes. Um, um, not only the economic um, uh, weakness, but the fact that there will be bouts of political uncertainty, as we, see, uh, we will see um, um, a series of elections just starting in Greece uh, um, and, and, and bringing up again the issue of, of potential Greek uh, exit, the Grexit. But there will be also important elections that might be um, decisive for the future of the, the, the Eurozone and uh, the EU uh, as such. Uh, these are the main elements of, of, of risk um, uh, for Central Europe. There is another uh, risk, and that is um, how the eventual normalization of e U.S. monetary policies, i.e. The, the quantitative easing exit, actually plays out for emerging markets. Um, once uh, U.S. interest rates are being raised, interest rates are normalized, 
uh, we will see an increased borrowing cost uh, for our emerging markets, particularly in, in Central Eastern Europe, but also in Turkey. Um, we will see also um, in some countries which are vulnerable to capital f uh, flow, um, uh, capital outflows, um, a, a need to edge up domestic interest rates, making also domestic borrowing more expensive uh, for growth, um, uh, credit and growth. Um, so how this plays out uh, will be also very important uh, for Central Eastern Europe. But there is a silver lining. The recent drop in oil prices is giving a little wriggle room perhaps um, with regards to the timetable with which the US will raise interest rates, given that oil prices will stay lower for a longer period of time than before the oil price decline. If the US monetary uh, policy tightening starts a little, little bit later, it's more gradual than otherwise would have been, it gives us, uh, give our countries which are more vulnerable um, to capital outflows as a result of uh, interest rate raises in the US, um, some policy space um, f and for growth.